Hi, right, it's time for another math easy solution. Time to discuss further into the applied project, which is faster going up or coming down video series. And now look at question three. Yeah, so I'm not going to recap too much on the applied project, uh, so make sure to watch my earlier videos for a better overview and recap on this project. But basically, this project involves throwing a ball directly in the air, like straight up in the air, and then. Uh, and then as it comes back down, basically the question is, uh, do you think it takes longer to reach a maximum height or to fall back, uh, back to earth from its maximum height? And in question one, uh, we went over my last, in my earlier video on the uh, governing differential equation of the motion of the ball as you throw it in the air and then uh, develop the velocity function of that ball. Question two went over the height of the ball as a function of time. And now question three, it looks at uh, basically solving for the time it takes to reach its maximum height. So that's what this question three is. So let T1 be uh, the time that the ball takes to reach its maximum height. And then it states, uh, show that, yeah, show that I just, uh, copy and pasted uh, this uh, rest of the question here. So it says show that T1 equals to M divided by P again where M is the mass of the ball P is the air resistance uh, coefficient and ln uh, and then you have ln mg g is gravity or um, acceleration due to gravity plus P times VO and again recall that VO is the initial velocity of the ball when you throw it in the air and then divide it all by mg so we have to show that it's this and then the other part of question three states find this time t1 for a ball with mass one kilogram initial velocity 20 meters per second and it says assume their resistance is one tenth of the speed in other words this is the p value one tenth so we'll do that after let's look at the first part it says show that t1 equals this equation right there so let's write solution for the solution so let's look into it and to find this time as you see when you throw a ball in the air let's say you uh, let's say throw the ball and it goes all the way in the air and as it, as it stops in the air it comes back down this uh, this initial I'm going to have the velocity VO initial this maximum height this ball is in the air this is the maximum height H max and as you can see, the ball is not moving. So at, at the maximum height, velocity of the ball is equal to zero. So in other words, at uh, at y, let's say at y of t equals two, uh, let's write h max or the maximum height. We had velocity at time t equals two, uh, well zero, and this t will go t one. That's because that's uh, what we're trying to show. This is the time it takes for the ball to reach its maximum height. So if t equals to t1, so we basically need to solve the velocity function when it equals to zero for the time t1. And we already uh, recall that the velocity function is this. So what we need to show is, well, let's just plug that in. So at v t1 equals to 0, we get 0 for the velocity, and now let's look at the values. Uh, scroll up again here, so vo plus mg divided by p, e to the negative pt divided by m minus mgp. Let's see if I can uh, write that, remember all that. So it's vo plus mg over p, e to the negative pt over m, minus mg over p. Let's uh, see if I can see if this is right. I think that's uh, correct. This is tedious uh, stuff. So uh, yeah, I think that's right. So that's right there. And now what we do is just try to solve this. So move this uh, negative mgp on the other side so it's positive. So we get a mgp equals to vo plus mg over p, this is going to be e to the negative pt over m. Over m. So now what I'm going to do is uh, get rid of this uh, vo plus mg over p on this side, so divide it out so that we get e to the power of of whatever on the right side. So what we get now is 
this mg over p, and I'll leave some space because we're going to have to lawn both sides. So then this is going to be times it by 1 over because we just divide both sides. mg over p. So yeah, we just uh, divide that out. So this multiplied by this. And now what we have, this equals 2 e to the negative pt over m. So recall that while well, the lawn uh, property where the natural log if we lawn both sides we get this so we're not changing anything we're doing it to both sides so we lawn it so that the reason this lawn in e cancels so this part equals to e to the I mean the e's cancel so we get negative pt over m on the right side so that's what we have but we have this negative here and if we uh, divide both sides by negative this becomes positive and the negative goes here but now we have a, a negative lawn and then um, what I'm going to do is just recall the lawn property and you can see the proof of this in the video link below in the natural log logarithmic uh, videos and their properties so what we have is uh, basically lawn or negative lawn of let's say a is equal to ln a to the power of negative 1. So the negative 1 goes down exactly as how we had this negative pt m divided by m goes down here when we ln it but ln e goes cancel. So this one's ln a. So what we have here, this is the same thing as writing ln well 1 over a a to the power of 1. So that's just a to the power of negative 1. Same thing as writing 1 over a. So when we have this so that means we can simplify this into having now this negative goes inside and this just flips everything upside down like this because we have uh, we have this whole thing to power negative one so we get lawn and now we're going to have a p over mg and now what I'm going to do is multiply the p inside this vo plus mg p I'll just write that down here so via vo plus mg over p and that's on the on the top right now I'll just put this one here just for completeness this is so that we flipped them and this equals to pt over m and this is uh, this t value is t1 that's all t1 just write that down because that this is at t equals to t1 that's the max so that's our time at the max and then this is pt1 over m and again this is just some tedious uh, algebra and log logarithmic manipulation so what we have here and I'm multiplied by the m and p on this side uh, let's move this over so what we get here is t1 is equal to and we move this m on top and then the p at the bottom m and p times it by and now we have lawn and what I'm going to do is multiply this out, this P times VO and then times MG, the P's cancel. So what we get here is PVO plus MG all over MG because the P's cancel this VO right there. And let's go look at the answer. I think that's exactly what we had. So MG plus PVO divided by MG and this is M over P and that's long. So this is uh, our answer right there. And uh, we had it's yeah, it was written the other way around, same thing. I just they just rearrange. Let's just put that to make it look identical to what we were asked to solve. So vo p vo, and let's circle this out. So that is our answer, and that's exactly what we were asked to find. And now let's look at the second part of the question, and that states we'll find this time t1, the ball's mass one kilogram, initial velocity twenty meters per second. Air resistance is one tenth of the um, the speed or the velocity. So speed is basically absolute value of the velocity. Um, I'll get to that in a bit. So at what we have now, mass is equal to ten. Or is it, I think this is, was yeah one kilogram, not ten. So mass equals one one kilogram. What I'm also going to do is well, before we get to that, so V O is equal to V at initial time. Uh, v O is just at time is equal to zero. This is 20 meters per second. And then it says uh, assume air resistance or the force of uh, A, not not G. So force of uh, air resistance is one tenth the velocity, or I mean of the speed. 
Speed is just the uh, velocity without a direction or absolute value of it. So this is p times absolute value of t. Uh, I mean of v. So this is p times absolute value of that. And this is one tenth the velocity. So it was told us that the air resistance is one tenth of the velocity. And this is going to be, well, our p value. So, yes, yeah, so what we have is p is equal to 1 over 10. That's our resistance value because again recall in my earlier videos that this is just equal to p times absolute value of v of t and I'll just show that again if you haven't uh, just to recap that's what the magnitude of the air resistance we assume to be p times absolute value of v of t which is uh, technically the speed of the ball because uh, speed is just velocity without direction velocity you need to have a direction I'll get to that hopefully in later videos that's on vectors and other stuff like that. So anyways, so that's what we have. So P is equal to 110. And now to get the units of this, let's look at units. So units of uh, force is, well, uh, this is uh, newtons, which is the same thing as, uh, as a kilogram mass times it by acceleration meters per second squared. And then velocity in this equation, uh, V has units of meters per second. So this means that the P has units of, let's put three lines for not necessarily equal, this is just stating that this is corresponding to, and this has units of, well, kilogram over seconds, because then if you have P kilogram over second times meters per second, you get kilogram meters per second squared, which is the Newton. So this is just kilogram over second. This is just for completeness sake. So that's the units here of the air resistance uh, coefficient. So that's just some um, minor house cleaning on the units. So now let's just plug these inside and get our answer for time uh, at the maximum height. So T1 is equal to M, which is one kilogram. I'll put the units. I'll ignore the units for now. We'll just assume. So it's one kilogram and P is one tenth here. So we have a kilogram and a kilogram over second. So this flips over and we get a seconds by itself. And now we have a lawn because this lawn has no units. And in fact, this all the units cancel here. Yeah, because both of these are uh, Newtons. So mg is this mass times acceleration. This is also uh, kilograms per second to get to the Newton. So these are all Newtons. They all cancel. There's no units inside the lawn. So ln of, and this is going to be one kilogram, one kilogram times it by g, and the other thing I needed to do was, yeah, assume g, so just move that over, assume, assume g for gravity is equal to, uh, let's go 9.8 meters per second squared. So this is my calculus book assumes for uh, this, this particular question. So we have one times 9.8 which is G and then plus P plus 110 times the uh, initial velocity of VO is 20 meters per second okay and then this is all divided by mg so 9 times 1.8 so that's what we have uh, here so 9 times uh, I mean 1 times 9.8 and then this 10 just flips over so we get 10 yeah, so we have 10 here times it by ln, and now this is 9.8 plus, and then this is, well, 1 over 10 divided by, tw I mean, 1 over 10 times 20, that's just, well, 2, so 20 divided by 10 is just 2, so plus 2 over 9.8, and then we have finally right here, no, it's not moving, okay, so we have T1, is equal to 10, so the exact value is 10 times ln 9.8 plus 2 is 11.8. 11.8 over 9.8. So that is what the exact value is. And now, if you were to plug this into the calculator, what we'll get is, yeah, we'll get uh, this value here. So I put in a Google calculator: 10 times ln 11.8 divided by 9.8. So about 1.857, I'll just round up to 1.86, and these are in units of seconds. So this is 1.86 seconds right here. So that is the time it takes to reach the maximum height.
And in the next video, actually, I'm going to go over finding the time it takes from the maximum height to the, the ground. And it's not as straightforward as this particular, um, yeah, this particular question. And, uh, yeah, and, and then the next question will will answer our initial uh, initial question of this entire project, which was, uh, does it take longer to reach the maximum height or fall back down to the earth from its maximum height? So initially, right now for our particular example, the one kilogram ball and 20 velocity, uh, initial velocity, we have 1.86 seconds to reach the maximum height. So stay tuned for the next video question uh, four to find out if it's faster or slower to go from the top to the bottom, and I'll do that in the next video. So anyways, that's all for today. If you learned from this uh, pretty interesting example video on, or a question video on question three of this applied project, which is a pretty interesting project, so make sure to watch it all in my earlier videos and the future ones coming soon. Anyways, that is all for today. If you learned, like always, you can download these exact notes in the link below, and thanks for watching, and stay tuned for another Math easy solution.